April 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Judges, chapters 13 through 15 of the Old Testament. The Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines for forty years. There was a man named Manoah from Zorah, from the Danite tribe. His wife was infertile and childless. The Lord's angelic messenger appeared to the woman and said to her, You are infertile and childless, but you will conceive and have a son. Now be careful, do not drink wine or beer, and do not eat any food that will make you ritually unclean. Look, you will conceive and have a son. You must never cut his hair, for the child will be dedicated to God from birth. He will begin to deliver Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and said to her husband, A man sent from God came to me. He looked like God's angelic messenger. He was very awesome. I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not tell me his name. He said to me, Look, you will conceive and have a son. So now do not drink wine or beer, and do not eat any food that will make you ritually unclean. For the child will be dedicated to God from birth till the day he dies. Manoah prayed to the Lord, Please, Lord, allow the man sent from God to visit us again, so he can teach us how we should raise the child. Who will be born? God answered Manoah's prayers. God's angelic messenger visited the woman again while she was sitting in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman ran at once and told her husband, Come quickly. The man who visited me the other day has appeared to me. So Manoah got up and followed his wife. When he met the man, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to my wife? He said, Yes. Manoah said, Now when your announcement comes true, how should the child be raised, and what should he do? The Lord's messenger told Manoah, Your wife should pay attention to everything I told her. She should not drink anything that the grapevine produces. She must not drink wine or beer, and she must not eat any food that will make her ritually unclean. She should obey everything I commanded her to do. Manoah said to the Lord's messenger, Please stay here a while so we can prepare a young goat for you to eat. The Lord's messenger said to Manoah, If I stay, I will not eat your food. But if you want to make a burnt sacrifice to the Lord, you should offer it. He said this because Manoah did not know that he was the Lord's messenger. Manoah said to the Lord's messenger, Tell us your name so we can honor you when your announcement comes true. The Lord's messenger said to him, You should not ask me my name because you cannot comprehend it. Manoah took a young goat and a grain offering and offered them on a rock to the Lord. The Lord's messenger did an amazing thing as Manoah and his wife watched. As the flame went up from the altar toward the sky, the Lord's messenger went up in it while Manoah and his wife watched. They fell face down to the ground. The Lord's messenger did not appear again to Manoah and his wife. After all this happened, Manoah realized that the visitor had been the Lord's messenger. Manoah said to his wife, We will certainly die because we have seen a supernatural being. But his wife said to him, If the Lord wanted to kill us, he would not have accepted the burnt offering and the grain offering from us. He would not have shown us all these things or have spoken to us like this just now. Manoah's wife gave birth to a son and named him Samson. The child grew and the Lord empowered him. The Lord's spirit began to control him in Mahana Dan between Zorah and Eshtael. Samson went down to Timno where a Philistine girl caught his eye. When he got home, he told his father and mother, A Philistine girl in Timna has caught my eye. Now get her for my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Certainly you can find a wife among your relatives or among all our people. You should not have to go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines. But Samson said to his father, Get her for me because she is the right one for me. Now his father and mother did not realize this was the Lord's doing because he was looking for an opportunity to stir up trouble with the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines were ruling Israel. 
Samson went down to Timnah. When he approached the vineyards of Timnah, he saw a roaring young lion attacking him. The Lord's spirit empowered him, and he tore the lion in two with his bare hands as easily as one would tear a young goat. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. Samson continued on down to Timnah and spoke to the girl. In his opinion, she was just the right one. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to see the lion's remains. He saw a swarm of bees in the lion's carcass, as well as some honey. He scooped it up with his hands and ate it as he walked along. When he returned to his father and mother, he offered them some and they ate it. But he did not tell them he had scooped the honey out of the lion's carcass. Then Samson's father accompanied him to Timnah for the marriage. Samson hosted a party there, for this was customary for bridegrooms to do. When the Philistines saw he had no attendants, they gave him thirty groomsmen who kept him company. Samson said to them, I will give you a riddle. If you really can solve it during the seven days the party last, I will give you thirty linen robes and thirty sets of clothes. But if you cannot solve it, you will give me thirty linen robes and thirty sets of clothes. They said to him, Let us hear your riddle. He said to them, Out of the one who eats came something to eat. Out of the strong one came something sweet. They could not solve the riddle for three days. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's bride, Trick your husband into giving the solution to the riddle. If you refuse, we will burn up you and your father's family. Did you invite us here to make us poor? So Samson's bride cried on his shoulder and said, You must hate me. You do not love me. You told the young man a riddle, but you have not told me the solution. He said to her, Look, I have not even told my father or mother. Do you really expect me to tell you? She cried on his shoulder until the party was almost over. Finally, on the seventh day, he told her because she had nagged him so much. Then she told the young men the solution to the riddle. On the seventh day before the sunset, the men of the city said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? He said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. The Lord's spirit empowered him. He went down to Ashkelon and murdered thirty men. He took their clothes and gave them to the men who had solved the riddle. He was furious as he went back home. Samson's bride was then given to his best man. Sometime later, during the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat as a gift and went to visit his bride. He said to her father, I want to have sex with my bride in her bedroom, but her father would not let him enter. Her father said, I really thought you absolutely despised her, so I gave her to your best man. Her younger sister is more attractive than she is. Take her instead. Samson said to them, This time I am justified in doing the Philistines harm. Samson went and captured 300 jackals and got some torches. He tied the jackals and pears by their tails and then tied a torch to each pear. He lit the torches and set the jackals loose in the Philistine standing grain. He burned up the grain heaps and the standing grain as well as the vineyards and olive groves. The Philistines asked, Who did this? They were told Samson, the Timnite's son-in-law, because the Timnite took Samson's bride and gave her to his best man. So the Philistines went and burned her and her father. Samson said to them, Because you did this, I will get revenge against you before I quit fighting. He struck them down and defeated them. Then he went down and lived for a time in the cave in the cliff of Etam. The Philistines went up and invaded Judah. They arrayed themselves for battle in Lehi. The men of Judah said, Why are you attacking us? The Philistines said, We have come up to take Samson prisoner, so we can do to him what he has done to us. Three thousand men of Judah went down to the cave in the cliff of Edom and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? Why have you done this to us? He said to them, I have only done to them what they have done to me. They said to him, We have come down to take you prisoner so we can hand you over to the Philistines. 
Samson said to them, Promise me you will not kill me. They said to him, We promise. We will only take you prisoner and hand you over to them. We promise not to kill you. They tied him up with two brand new ropes and led him up from the cliff. When he arrived in Lehi, the Philistines shouted as they approached him. But the Lord's spirit empowered him. The ropes around his arms were like flax dissolving in fire, and they melted away from his hands. He happened to see a solid jawbone of a donkey. He grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Samson then said, With the jawbone of a donkey I have left them in heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey I have struck down a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw the jawbone down and named that place Ramoth Lehi. He was very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, you have given your servant this great victory, but now must I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the Philistines? So God split open the basin at Lehi, and water flowed out from it. When he took a drink, his strength was restored, and he revived. For this reason, he named the spring and Hackery. It remains in Lehi to this very day. Samson led Israel for 20 years during the days of Philistines' prominence. God, I can't be the only one who reads these passages and imagines Veruca assault from Willy Wonka when Samson's throwing his tantrums. Get her for me because she is the right one for me. Get her for me. Um, yeah. So I find it, I find it fascinating that even though you chose Samson prior to his birth, to become a Nazarite for you until he died he wasn't so good on that path <laughs> Nazarites usually could choose to dedicate themselves to you um, we read about that in numbers and they could also leave whenever they were ready during that time they had to promise to have no contact with the dead uh, not drink alcohol uh, and they couldn't cut their hair those were the three stipulations after dedicating that time to you and before his birth Samson was dedicated to you and we see here Samson completely disobeying these we see his contact with the dead lion uh, and then of course he goes home and shares it with his his mother and father uh, we see him drinking at this big party he threw for his wedding um, and as I'm sure everyone listening knows, I'm not giving anything away. We soon see the, the haircutting part come through as well. But I think one of the big things we need to keep in mind is even, even if we choose to not follow your will, which obviously on a side note just baffles me because if we follow your will, we can do amazing things for you um, in our lifetime etc etc but even if we choose to not fulfill what you have planned for us even if we choose to be belligerent and demand what we want you can still use us we have seen all the way through the bible already where you have used satan to get what you want we have seen you use non-believing people to get what you need and now we're seeing somebody who was called by you to be the last judge and to be a Nazarite dedicated to you for his life. And we see you still being able to empower him with your spirit and succeed in your will happening in these situations. We also see you disciplining him in multiple other situations. But I think that's something people need to get that you are in control. You reign sovereign over all of this. Uh, you are in charge. Your will is what will prevail. Um, in the end, you win. Uh, we know all of this. And we know all this on paper. I just, I just wish sometimes, God, that what I knew on paper would make it to my heart. I know there's many times when I act like Veruca Salt being a demanding brat. But God, if you loved me, why wouldn't you give me this? 
thank goodness it's not my will that happens, <laughs> but it's your will. I just posted on uh, Facebook the other day, somebody, somebody was saying that they were praying for sales online, and that's why she was selling stuff. And somebody said, well, I'm praying too, but I'm not getting sales. <laughs> I wrote underneath, I said, I'm just blessed that I serve a Lord that doesn't give me what I ask for, but instead gives me what he wants to give me. And it's very true. Um, I am in awe of the blessings that you choose to give me, overriding the silly things that I seem to pick in this lifetime. I remember one time uh, going to a, a friend of mine who's like my second father and uh, telling him at that time, I think I want to get married. I think I found the man I want to marry. And he, he said, no. <laughs> and I re very, very much respected his opinion. And he said, no. He said, I want for you an amazing man of God. I want what God wants for you. And this is not what God wants for you. And I remember at the time in my Veruca Salt hat of being a spoiled brat and going, but why? Why can't I have what I want? This is what I want. This is what I love. Why can't I be happy? <laughs> Hopefully I'm not the only one who goes through these bratty times. But in this instant looking back, he wanted what was best for me because he loves me. And God, I know you want what's best for me because you love me beyond anything I've ever experienced here on earth. You have protected me in ways that I haven't even imagined yet, but as they uncover layer and layer of protection from different situations, I'm astounded at the lengths you went through to protect me from things. A lot of times to protect me from what I thought I wanted. Your love for me is absolutely amazing and every day I am more and more surprised by it. Again, I'm not sure why I should be. I'm reading in the Bible that you've done this for all time. But I am surprised that somebody like, would, like me would deserve your attention. Thank you, God. Thank you for all the amazing blessings that I see you give me. Thank you for all the amazing blessings that I don't see that are working behind the scenes. Thank you so much for telling me no and not letting me get away with being a spoiled brat. Instead, teaching me what true discipline looks like and what true blessings look like. And more importantly, what true love really looks like. I love you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>